Josh Allen here of Bucks Report. I'm here with Mazzy Wilkins, cornerback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. How are you doing today? How's everything? Everything been good. It's fun to go get this workout in. Awesome. That sounds great. Um, so I'm going to start the questions here. Um, you're a hometown kid. You played high school in Plant City, and you stayed local at USF. Plant, 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 Temple Plant, HB Plant High School. There you go. Um, what was it like getting the call from the Buccaneers after the draft, landing on the practice squad, and then being promoted to the active roster? Man, it was a, it was a roller coaster ride. It was everything. I had there was nothing I I could not have planned for it. I couldn't have prepared for it. It was just one of those things I had to get through and go through on my own, which I did. And I'm blessed. It was like really like leading up to the draft. I I had during my senior year in college, I was watching the teams who needed the demand at my position. And then leading up to the draft, I'm like, man, Tampa, they've been struggling that deep in the secondary. It would be something if I just go to Tampa. Like, I'm from Tampa. It will be something I know I could fit in because I had seen that Bruce Arians, Kane, Todd Bowles. Yeah. I did my research. I'm like, man, I feel like, oh, Todd, oh, they had Patrick Peterson, Tyler Matthew. That's a man scheme. That's the same scheme I was playing in college. Exactly. I know I could fit in. And when it happened, it was like, wow, it's really happening. Well, that's like, awesome. Words couldn't even describe it. That, that's awesome. And when you were promoted, you made an immediate impact in your first game. Some strong plays, two tackles in your debut. How do you plan to build upon that this year, especially with some stiff competition in that cornerback room? Well, you know, it's just like, first and foremost, you got to have the mentality, the mindset to go do it. You got to have the confidence to be able to throw yourself into the fire and not be, not be afraid to make mistakes. So... That's my first step. That's the, how I'm going to go about it. I'm just going to go and have as much confidence as I'm going to. My motto is I'm going to live by the sword. I'm going to die by the sword. If I got to go out on my shield, so be it. I'm going to go out on my shield, but at least I'm going out a warrior, not a coward in the direction. You know? That's a great motto. I love that. Kind of Game of Thrones-esque. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what are your expectations for yourself this season, and what goals do you hope to achieve, both personal and professional? Uh, my goals really this season is to, like, honestly, to start, to become the, the premier player that I know I can be and build on last year. Like, I don't look – I look at last year as, like, a, like a stepping stone, like a little push, like a little burst. Yeah. It gave me the confidence to come out and do what I know I'm going to accomplish this year. So. That's really what, what it's about on the field, getting some playing time, getting my name marketed out there because I got we got Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski now, so I know that's definitely a big opportunity for me to go and show myself to all other teams and to the world, really. You okay. know, but you know, just go hard and make them and do what I've been doing. Be a baller, be who I am all the time. So that's that's my goal on the field and off the field. Just keep growing as a young man. You know, I want to start. I want to start a nonprofit. You know, like maybe like help out some of the kids in need in the Tampa Bay area. Since I'm from here, I want to do a lot of giving back to the city because I'm from here. You know, stuff like that. That's that's awesome. That's that's really awesome. Um, Todd Ball, uh, Todd Ball spoke really highly of you when you were promoted to the active roster. What's it been like playing for him? And how's his scheme? One that you know is known for maximizing a player's strengths brought out your strengths as a player? I mean, I honestly, I love playing for Coach Bowles. Yeah, it felt great when he spoke highly of me. It was one of those things where, like, you know, you working so hard, you don't realize that other people are watching until they, until they like, they say something. So yeah. it was like, wow, they have really been watching what I've been doing. And, like, honestly, Coach Bowles is, like, the best, one of the best play, coaches to play for just due to the soul that. You know, he knows that you're in the NFL. Everybody's good. You don't yeah. make mistakes. You're going to get beat times. He he wants you to go play fast. Awesome. He wants he's ranking on a numbers game that you're going to win more than you lose. And and with that, that gives you confidence in him to call the plays. And he and you you also get confidence in yourself to know like if I get beat, okay, I'm gonna come back and make another play because coach is gonna put me in that same position where I know I can make a play. So, like, I honestly love it. And, and honestly, I just feel like our personalities match very well because I'm very 
I'm a very laid back guy off the field, but once I get in that building, that facility, and on those and on that on on that gridiron, I'm a different player. I'm I'm not nice. I'm I'm mean. I'm alpha, and I just feel like it can, it just clicks. The whole coaching staff and me, my personality it clicks. Like I don't I don't take BS. I'm trying to make a play. I'm trying to knock your head off. And I'm trying to pose my will on you because I have been the underdog for so long that when I get my opportunity, I'm trying to show you play in a playoff and I, and I feel like the coaches peep that and they they recognize that and then that's that's part of my strengths and they like that about me I bring an edge to the team that aggressiveness and that that trust that you have with the coaching staff to let you go and be the player you are awesome um so what what does it do to your confidence the Buccaneers didn't draft a cornerback they didn't add one in free agency what does that do to your confidence uh confidence that they didn't do any of that that they like the group they have there um, where does that put you? I mean, it, I mean, it, it, it can make you feel some type of way. I honestly didn't even think about it like that, to be honest, because I know at the end of the day, I'm still going to have to go out here and perform when training camp comes back around. So my, my mindset is just, to be honest, is to kill. Like when it comes time to get on that field, I got to go kill it. Whoever's in front of me, I got to kill it. Whatever it is, I gotta kill it. So like my mentality is never about the next man or what whatever the coach has in plan and in store for for the team. I'm really working on being the best player I could be and contributing to the team. So that warrior mentality like you spoke of. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Um so who, who's... my tattoos of warriors, I got all samurai because I'm really into the samurai culture, Japanese culture. So I got a lot of Japanese warrior tattoos on me because I really see myself in that light. That's a great. That's a great to look to look at yourself as well. You know, especially playing a game as football where it is a it's a battlefield. Exactly. Um, so who's been your biggest influence, and who do you try to model your game after? To be completely honest, I take my game. I model my game after like four players. Yeah. I would have to say. I'm out of my game after a player like up, bro. I'm out of my game after a player like Tyler Matthew, just off okay. of like his aggressiveness and his smarts. He's a very smart player. He's very instinctual, and I feel like I'm that. He maybe not be the fastest player down the field, but Tyler Matthew's ten yard burst and covering ground within ten yards, I feel okay. like I could definitely match that. And I've, and I've shown that a few times if you've seen my tape. Mm-hmm. Also, I like I like players like um, Charles Woodson and Champ Bailey. They just ball hawks. Oh, They're yeah. all around. Especially like Champ Bailey, he, he, he's going to go get that ball in. And that's somebody I strive to beat. And um, I like Charles Woodson just due to the fact he's a very versatile player. Yeah. He can play. He's he ended his career at safety. He started that corner. He could play inside, and I feel like I feel like and we kind of got similar body types, and I feel like I can I, I can honestly get my game up there. And then I like Richard Sherman yeah. due to his brash his brash personality. I feel like I'm similar. We not liked by everybody, <laughs> maybe but you know, but it's cool. Everybody don't gotta like you, but they gonna respect you. Absolutely. But as Drake as Drake would say. They don't got to respect. They just got it itself. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So like, that, that's like one of those, that's one of those um, guys I like. And, he's, and his mental, his, he's, his mental is, is just amazing to me. Yeah. This is how he, how big of a team player he is. Mm-hmm. How he, how he challenges his receivers week in and week out. Like, I, I have nothing but respect for Rich Sherman. Absolutely. And tackling corner as well. He's an all-around all cornerback. Absolutely. Like my game fits in with his too as well. That's a perfect answer. Uh, that was a that was a perfect answer. Um, so moving on, how how have your how have the virtual classrooms been going on? How have you been staying in safe uh, shape, and what have you been doing to entertain yourself? Man, like these virtual classes, they they're fun, you know, like. Now that we got our service, I was I was kind of itching to have mine because I like to watch just games anyway, just mm-hmm. watch football. But like, it's fun to keep learning and growing as a player mentally. 
And then like for workouts, I just been doing my normal lifts, my, my, my workout program with the strength staff and sending us. And then I also do a lot of boxing and Muay Thai in the off season anyway. I yeah. do that every year. That's just because I, I enjoy the cardio and I've been doing martial arts since I was a kid. So. Work on those hands too, pressing receivers. Exactly, being able to move your hands and feet at the same time. Absolutely. And what have you been doing to stay in sh- uh, stay like entertained, you know? Because, I mean, we're kind of locked down. Florida's starting to loosen up a little bit. But what have you been doing to entertain yourself uh, besides football? Man, to be, I, I like to fish a lot. But to be honest, I haven't, I've been missing football. There's, there's, if you were to, like, take the corn, like, the COVID stuff away, we would be in the mix of football right now. So, Absolutely. like, and my body's feeling that, like. My body is used to being active at this time, so mm-hmm. I've been trying to stay as active as possible with football, like at least staying outside because I know if this was a whole year removed from today or a year previously, we would be in, foot, in the mix with football right now. So I'm trying to keep my body in the same muscle memory and in the same, you know, little scheme of things to keep going with the flow and just really that's it. I've been missing football, so yeah. I've been doing all football stuff. <laughs> Nice, Madden simulations and stuff like that, just working on um, So, well, Tom was working out today with a couple of the guys. Maybe you can jump on that, you know, shade Mike Evans around while in practice. I know, man. We've been trying. I had to get up and get the receivers on the team. Be like, man, what's up? When we go do some one-on-one? We'll let you know. We'll let you know. We'll let you know. Man, they be, it's like they trying to get a little competitive advantage yeah. for the training camp. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well, speaking of Tom, what was your initial reaction when you found out Tom Brady and then Gronk were coming to Tampa? And uh, what do you hope to learn from them going against them in practice? My initial reaction, I didn't believe it at first. I, I kind of seen it, but I'm like, man, nah, like, nah, nah. <laughs> and then when, I, and then when I finally seen it, it was like, wow, like we really got Tom Brady. I was really excited. I still am very excited. I'm ready to pick Tom and Tom's brain. <laughs> more than anything and just see how they move like there's a reason you, their name is mentioned in that light mm-hmm. and i and i aspire to have my name mentioned in that light in the future and so i, I really want to just i don't even have to hear from the from their mouth per se i just want to observe and watch yeah. and feel their presence in the building and just pick up and like take notes and then also just when I found out that about them coming to the team, I knew it was going to bring a new opportunity for me. So I'm really just preparing myself to go out here and have a really good season, go be, a, be one of the best team players I could be, but ultimately like brand myself mm. as well because I know like when you have these caliber of players, you see our schedule this year, we have a lot more prime time games. Absolutely. We have, it's a lot. I feel like this is definitely an opportunity for me to go and show Mazzy Wilkins. Mazzy Incorporated, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's really one of those opportunities for me to go and show who I really am and, and, and like, put myself on the map nationally, in the league, all of 31, 32 team, whatever. Like, I can show everybody what, what I'm about. Yeah, and you spoke of that opportunity. And, you know, with Tom coming down to Tampa, there's obviously a lot more national media attention, uh, high expectations and that come along with that. So how do you kind of manage those expectations? And how do you keep yourself grounded and focused on, you know, everyone's talking Super Bowl in the backyard, Tampa Super Bowl hosting it. How do you manage those and keep yourself grounded through all that? To be honest with you, like, uh, to be honest with you, I've been, I've been the underdog for so long. I've been having to fight for adversity so long certain things like y'all can get excited about but it doesn't knock me off my feet I'm able to still like work to my, to my goals that I have set for myself I just know like yes there, he's definitely another opportunity he's definitely an opportunity he's bringing an opportunity a blessing to me now all I have to go out here and do is achieve the goals that I set before I even move him to come mm. so I've just been working hard and just sticking to the script to what yeah. got me here. I picked up some knowledge and tools along the way. And I'm just you just piling it together to to this time to go ride and show the world. Yeah. The opportunity is there now, it's just time to capitalize on it. Exactly. 
Um, so also, with all the uncertainty in the NFL right now, and maybe talk of playing in you know, empty stadiums without fans, what are your thoughts on that? Like I say, I'm always making that. So, but I know I'm a warrior at heart. And, and I remember a quote one of my uh, uh, college coaches used to tell me, say, we, as a, as a warrior, as a competitor, you're willing to do what you, what's at task whenever, however, for nothing. And that's how I feel if I love the game so much. I'm, 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 I mean, I'm ready to do this whenever. However, what time for yeah. nothing. So with that being said, I don't need the fans in there. I get excited when I get on the grass anyway. So yeah. you know, we're gonna go out here and just play the game, have fun. It's gonna be like a scrimmage. I bet the the crazy what I've been thinking about when I heard there's no fans, that's a little less pressure. You go I bet in these first few games you're gonna see a lot of crazy plays being made like yeah. in practice. There's not that you don't have the pressure of all them eyes on you. Yeah. Now I might feel like now you maybe have the cameras and everything, but I feel like these these those first few games are gonna be like some entertaining games to watch for sure. Absolutely. Just having football back in general is gonna be great. Uh, they were talking about maybe pumping in crowd noise. What's your thoughts on that? Oh, we we we're, we're used to that every day in practice. You know, yeah. when you prepare. You getting ready for those games on Sundays? You gotta, you gotta prepare environmentally, mentally, physically, emotionally. So, you know, we can cross all our teams and dot all our eyes. So that's every day. That crowd noise is very annoying, <laughs> especially in the home, like our home game. That's when our defense is on the field. You know what I'm saying? So we got like every home game that crowd noise is banned, and we gotta have be able to communicate with it. So. That's really nothing too much different for me, but you know it might change for other people. But it's still gonna be a good time. Absolutely, and it's definitely gonna be a lot louder this year than last year, with almost all the season tickets sold out due to Tom coming to town as well. Um, just to finish up the interview, and I want to thank you for your time. Um, what's something the Bucks fans should know about Mazzy Wilkins? Excuse me. What's something Bucks fans should know about Mazzy Wilkins? I'm a big, I'm a, I'm a big music head. I love, I love old school rap, R&B, blues, all type of music like that. I'm very into music. Like one, one of my favorite rappers is Dipsy Hustle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's another one. That I'm, very, I'm a very soulful dude, but it's just when that, when I'm on the field and I got that uniform on, I turn into a beast. But that's it. Perfect. That's great. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time, Mazzy. I uh, wish you nothing but the best this season and uh, good luck. Thank you.